Ready? Yeah. Are soldiers still refusing to serve over the Green Line? God, very, very few. If a soldier acts like that, he's he's a pariah. You know, uh, he'll get maybe support from from some European-based organizations, but many soldiers do. They don't have a problem with it. It's it's part of uh, it's part of protecting our nation, and a lot of the guys are really proud of it. So it's very rare that you're going to find. And if a guy refuses to serve, honestly, they go to jail. Do you do you live among Arab communities? Sure, absolutely. All around me. Are they seeking a peace that it, that Israelis won't give them? Most people don't realize what the Arab communities are about. A lot of people don't remember before '93 the Oslo. You know, people say the Oslo Accords and everything, and how it destroyed the peace that there were. A lot of Arabs simply want to live in peace with Israel. They recognize that the only way that they can get a true peace and actually move forward is under Israel. Uh, unfortunately, if they say that out loud or in public. Their lifespan gets shortened by a number of years. So what's the difference what the Arab public feels if the leadership is controlled by this Islamist, uh, irredentist, reconquista movement? Well, if, first of all, the PLO, the Palestinian Authority, is not Islamist. Okay? You have to realize that. Hamas is Islamist. Hamas is. Uh, Abu Mazen is interested in money, and power, greed, just like a good old leader should be. And uh, he's a tyrant and their people are held really under the thumb. You know, you know, just remember, they haven't had elections in 11 years. Why is it no one's asking that question? Of course, we know that Hamas has a very strong chance of taking the elections and so on. A lot of people don't realize that the PLO is working in coordination with the IDF. A lot of the arrests, I mean, you don't get the, record, the, the, the records of it, it's always these Hamas operatives that are being stuck, stopped. Who's feeding Israel the, that, that information? So the, the America hasn't been pushing for elections because they want Hamas to be put down, given terrorist organization. But is that really the democratic way? Abbas is a tyrant. He's putting away his billions like his, his mentor Yasser Arafat did, like many of the other Arab leaders do. And they can't speak. And when another, well, anyone who believes differently. A thing that I've always found interesting about the, I guess if you call it the left over here, or, or progressive or liberals or so on, I never understood how they support the emergence of a state that is void of everything they consider dear, that is diametrically opposed to their core values, whether it's freedom of press, whether it's women's rights, whether it's gay rights. Stuff. How is it that these people support something that is, goes against their grain? What is their problem? What, what, what's their trauma? When I've been told, they say, oh, human rights, human rights, bullshit. I want to say, I look around America, you want to see problems? Look, at, look in your backyard first. If they want to come up to us and criticize Israel, do it with a track record. What are you doing here? What are you taking? LA has some pretty bad neighborhoods that could really use some help. Why aren't they helping out those poor people there? You got to go away and help something and, and maybe even support an enemy? Why don't you work here? Put your money where your mouth is. You live here, you don't live there. But are the Palestinians suffering as a result of uh, Israeli occupation? I think the Palestinians are suffering as a result of the Oslo Accords. The Oslo Accords, which is, is it still being upheld? Well, I'm talking about the whole concept of creating a, a Palestinian government based on, on destroying Israel or creating a Palestinian state. They've, after 90, remember, people don't remember, before 93, before the Intifada for that matter, there was no wall. There were barely any roadblocks anywhere. Arabs of Judea and Samaria could travel freely anywhere around the country. Tourism was at a boom. There were millions of dollars coming because Israelis loved to travel. Ramallah, Nablus, Hebron, all these places were packed with Israeli tourists and spending money. And they didn't have to pay taxes. Was there some terrorism? Yes, a lot less. The Arabs are the ones suffering. I, and, you know, I know it's very non-politically correct to speak about Shimon Peres. Shimon Peres screwed them royally. Screwed who? The Arabs. How? by simply enabling them to create an entity like this that would continue to oppress their people. By giving them, they haven't been moving forward, they've been moving backwards. And it's a, it's a problem. But did he, did he do it with malice or was it just coincidence that it occurred? No, Shimon Paris had a view, it's sort of like if you listen to the Lenin song, Imagine. But if you're going to work with someone, you usually need a partner. He wasn't looking for that. 
And uh, the Arabs among themselves, people didn't realize, why aren't they coming to the funeral? The Arabs were very upset at Shimon Peres. He screwed them royally. And uh, that's where they are today. Why are the settlements, or the, why are the settlers mad with Bibi? I can't answer that because you're saying the settlers, like that's one Monolithic. voice, that yeah. that's one person. Everyone has various reasons. You can't say, can I say, why are the Jews angry? Why are the Christians angry? Settlers, the, first of all, the term settlers, let's be more accurate. If you're saying the Jews living in Judea and Samaria, yeah. why are they angry with yeah. Bibi? Everyone has his own reasons. I have, I have a long list, you know, but uh, and most of them aren't even political. So, uh, what would you like to see the Israeli government do? I'd like to see the Israeli government create better and less expensive housing for our youth. I'd like to see them uh, push small businesses. I'd like to see them take a stand and stand up strong. We're against our enemies and saying also in public. Uh, I'd like to see more ecology. I'd like to see some better beaches. I'd like to see less lying politicians. I'm sorry if it's not, if you don't, I know you want to hear build all over the place. We're building, we build, you know. I want to see the Negev develop more. I want to see the Galil develop more, the Golan. So it's one country. We have to stop separating Judea and Samaria from the, the rest of the country. It's not. No more Greenland. Doesn't exist. Judea, Samaria, there's the Galil. All little parts and regions of this country we call Israel. There is not a separation. Get it out of your mind. One country.